This is an Asian pear fruit tree gilt. And you can see a little bit of a residue, a little bit of a white residue, and that's just kale and clay, which acts as an irritant for, uh, to try to keep pests away. And there's also a codling moth trap. At the base, uh, I've planted plants that benefit the tree. So this is basically a guild. So what we've got here is comfrey, which is a great nutrient accumulator. We've got, uh, which also produces a, uh, a nice bloom that the, that the, uh, that the bees like bringing in the uh, pollinators. And then there's also alfalfa, which is a nice uh, nitrogen fixer, also produces a nice flower. Uh, there's chives down here at the base, which acts as a pest deterrent. There's uh, gumi in the backdrop here, which produces a nice berry and is also a nitrogen fixer. There's chicory, which is a nutrient accumulator, also produces a flower that lasts from June until frost. This is another pear tree guild, and this is a, a European style pear, so this is not an Asian pear here. And um, this is an interesting guild too. Underneath here we've got uh, yarrow, which is a great nutrient accumulator. It's also got tiny flowers, which is great at bringing in the uh, beneficial insects. Uh, there's uh, some alfalfa, there's oregano, some really nice stand of oregano right here, which is a great at, uh, at being a, a pest deterrent. And it also has a, a tiny flower, which brings in tons of beneficial insects. There's uh, clover down here, which is a nitrogen fixer. There's Eliagnus here, which is producing some really nice, uh, really nice berries down in here that I'll have to harvest at some point later today. Uh, there's uh, comfrey, which is a nutrient accumulator. Uh, the the gumi, by the way, is a nitrogen fixer. And um, there's some chicory, which is a nutrient accumulator, also produces a bloom for, uh, for a long period of time. Uh, one thing I want to say about uh, fruit tree guilds and polyculture, I, I, can't, I really do like planting in this manner. I much prefer it to, you know, um, just straight mulch underneath your fruit trees. The, the thing is, it's not a panacea. It's not like if you get a good, and this is a pretty good polyculture in my opinion. It's not like if you get a good polyculture and you've got um, high value fruit, that that's all you need and you don't have to worry about codling moth damage, you don't have to worry about uh, pests and disease, you, you still are going to have to deal with that stuff. I think that this helps, but I don't think it's necessarily going to um, work in all cases. For example, if you've got, uh, this is actually a grafted pear, so this is producing a very high value pear that I like. So I, I do come in here and spray with kale and clay, I put in codling moth traps, um, and then I put a, um, a horticultural oil in the uh, early spring. So it's no, no chemicals or anything, um, but I do actually am doing a little bit more than just the, uh, the fruit tree gills. Now, as I get further out, this, this is what I would, I would consider this zone two. Once I get into zone three, where I have ungrafted stuff, I'm not as concerned about getting the fruit. And I'll, I'll get decent fruit out there, but it's not something that um, I'm concerned if I lose a lot of it or, or a good chunk of it. So this is a fairly nice plum tree guild. Uh, we've got some milkweed, which is a fantastic source of nectar. Uh, we've got yarrow, which is a great nutrient accumulator, uh, comfrey, alfalfa, uh, oregano, a little more, some different type of oregano over here, uh, chicory, which is a great nutrient accumulator. We've got clover. And there's uh, right over here to the left, there's actually an autumn olive, which is in the Eliagnus family, which is a nitrogen fixer. So this tree is pretty well taken care of as far as the plants around them. And then also the other big benefit that this tree has is it has the uh, water in the backdrop. So you can kind of hear the frogs every now and again, and they're helping to provide uh, the insect uh, control. And um, the plant is also benefiting from the humidity of the water. I've got some apple trees here and a guild of comfrey, chicory, uh, chives, and Eliagnus. One thing to realize with comfrey, and I think my comfrey here has gotten a bit uh, over dominant in the fruit tree guild, in, um, and I think it's important to, to realize that comfrey gets, gets really, really large. And I think it's important that if you're gonna be planting comfrey under your fruit trees, that you're not doing more than one comfrey plant per per tree. Because if you do if you do two or three, I mean it's pretty much just going to take up the entire understory. So now we're moving out to zone three. 
And you'll notice in zone three, you don't see any kale and clay sprayed on any of the trees. Basically, these guys get no uh, treatment whatsoever. There's no codling moth traps. Uh, and this is a, uh, this is a uh, native plum. And um, in the understory, this is so basically we've got a, a, a plum tree guild here. Uh, we've got uh, oregano, uh, yarrow. We've got more yarrow here, comfrey. There's um, some chicory behind it. There's uh, more yarrow back in the back behind it. There's also some clover and some alfalfa. And then on the other side, on this side right over here, we've got uh, an alder tree. So eventually, once that alder gets to be above head height, we'll start cutting it and it will start feeding this tree. This guy's also growing on a berm of a swale. So this guy's done uh, better than the some of the trees that are, are growing on flat ground. The, the swale has really benefited this tree as well. So again, we're still out in zone three and we've got an elderberry here. And on, in the understory of the elderberry, we've got comfrey. We've got plantain, which just grew on its own. That's a nutrient accumulator. We've got shasta daisies. We've got clover, alfalfa. We've got, um, there's actually New Jersey tea back here, which is a nitrogen fixer. So still down in zone three here. This is a uh, mulberry. And we've got some chicory. Uh, we've got clover. We've got yarrow. Uh, we've got some alfalfa, oregano, there's plantain, there's uh, more oregano in the backdrop there. This is an, an alder, so we've got a nitrogen fixer here between a, a mulberry, and then on the other side we've got an elderberry. So this, so this guy will get cut uh, as it gets bigger and will help to provide nitrogen to both the uh, mulberry and the elderberry here. So um, again, there's a lot of stuff that I planted here, but there's also stuff that that came on its own and um, and that's absolutely fine too.